Ada for telling my BF it was ridiculous I waited 8 days for him to wash dishes I asked him to? I should have seen it coming. The moment I walked into our tiny apartment after a long day at work, the sight of the towering pile of unwashed dishes hit me like a brick wall. There they stood, a glistening monument to procrastination, the plates and pans a testament to my boyfriend Nick's uncanny ability to dodge chores. The irony? I had explicitly asked him to tackle the mountain of kitchen chaos 8 days prior. Yes, 8 days exactly 192 hours of my polite reminders, increasingly exasperated texts, and, okay, maybe a few passive-aggressive comments about how I wasn't running a restaurant. Hey, babe. Nick called from the living room, his voice brimming with that effortless enthusiasm I used to find charming. It wasn't charming anymore. You're home early. Want to watch that new show? He was sprawled on the couch, hair tousled and clad in his usual weekend uniform of sweatpants and a t-shirt emblazoned with a cartoon cat. I couldn't help but roll my eyes. You mean after I deal with this? I gestured toward the kitchen, a dramatic flourish befitting a soap opera. Right, right, he said, waving his hand dismissively as if I'd merely mentioned an errant sock. You can do it tomorrow. Tomorrow? I blinked at him incredulously. Tomorrow will be day nine. That's basically a record. Record? He feigned confusion, brows furrowing in mock concern. I don't think there's a world record for how long dishes can sit in a sink. Not yet, I muttered under my breath, already feeling the heat of irritation rise. Days turned into a week, each passing moment weighed down by unspoken tension. Every time I washed my own dish because, let's be honest, I wasn't about to let my dinner plate join the crime scene I felt a mix of frustration and guilt. Nick was not a bad boyfriend. In fact, he was incredibly loving and often went out of his way to make me laugh. But this? This was like watching a comedy of errors unfold in slow motion, and I was the unwilling star. I tried to distract myself. I organized our shared Spotify playlists, scrolled through Instagram, even dabbled in some amateur baking to channel my annoyance into something productive. My brownies turned out more like Rock's Rocky Road, if you will after I got lost in thought about how the hell a person could ignore an overflowing sink. I needed a plan, a way to address this without losing my mind or our relationship. The weekend came, and as I stared at the mountain of dishes that now seemed like a foreshadowing of our relationship's future, I decided to confront him. Nick, I started, choosing my words carefully, can we talk? Sure. He responded, his eyes lighting up as if I'd suggested a spontaneous trip to the beach. I don't want to bring it up, but I need to talk about the dishes, I said, fidgeting with the hem of my sweater. He paused mid-bite of his pizza. Dishes? Didn't you say you were just going to do them tomorrow? I blinked, incredulous. Nick, you're really going to act like I haven't been waiting for you to do them for a week? He shrugged, his nonchalance getting under my skin. I thought you were just exaggerating. Exaggerating? I almost laughed, a sound laced with disbelief. What part of eight days sounds exaggerated? I mean, are we waiting for a ceremony or something? Is this a rite of passage for your dishes? He chuckled, but I wasn't in the mood for jokes. Okay, okay, he finally relented. I'll wash them. But we both knew that this moment wasn't just about the dishes it was a flashpoint, a manifestation of deeper frustrations we hadn't confronted. As I watched him turn back to his pizza, the laughter faded, and I felt a pit of disappointment swell in my stomach. You know, it's not just about the dishes, right? What do you mean? He asked, his casual demeanor faltering. It's about feeling like I'm the only one keeping our home together, I admitted, my voice quivering slightly. Like I'm the only one who cares. I do care. He insisted, looking genuinely hurt. I thought you were okay with it. Okay with a pile of dishes that could probably qualify for a natural disaster? I shot back, my frustration surfacing like a wave. I'm not asking for the world. Just a little teamwork, you know? After that conversation, things didn't change overnight. The dishes remained, stubborn and steadfast, a looming reminder of our communication failures. But somehow, the tension broke a little. Nick began sending me silly memes about procrastination each one eliciting a chuckle and easing some of the frustration. It was like he was trying to lighten the mood, even if he still avoided the chore that sparked it all. As the days rolled by, I realized that maybe I wasn't the only one avoiding the deeper issues at hand. We'd fallen into a routine of neglect, both of household responsibilities and each other's emotional needs. The realization stung, but it also motivated me. I wanted to shake things up, and what better way than with a little humor and a spontaneous date night? Nick, I declared one Thursday, slamming my hands on the table as if I had a brilliant plan. We're going on a date night, and I'm calling the shots. Date night? He raised an eyebrow, intrigued. What are we doing? Fancy restaurant? Dance party? Skydiving? 
More like, a what the hell are we doing with our lives discussion over takeout and a game night, I replied, feeling slightly ridiculous. He laughed, a sound that made my heart swell despite the chaos. Sounds like a plan. Can we eat first? I'm starving. With a mountain of takeout containers spread across our table, we dug into the food, both of us quiet for a moment, savoring the flavors and the togetherness. I could sense an unspoken understanding in the air, a readiness to dig deeper, even if we had started with fried rice and spring rolls. Okay, Nick, here's the thing, I said, after we both devoured half of the food. I need to know that you're invested in this relationship, just like I am. Of course I am, he replied, his expression sincere. I love you. Then why can't you just wash some dishes? He winced, but instead of deflecting, he leaned forward, eyes earnest. Honestly? Sometimes I feel overwhelmed by everything work, life, adulting. The dishes felt like just another chore and a long list of things that were stressing me out. I get it, I said softly. But we can't let the little things pile up, literally and figuratively. We're a team, and teamwork means sharing the load. I need you to step up when it comes to the chores, just like I step up for you in other ways. The evening turned into a cathartic discussion, filled with laughter and the occasional playful jab about how many dishes were currently gracing our sink. By the time we were done, I felt lighter, and I could see the relief reflected in Nick's eyes. We had navigated the murky waters of our frustrations and emerged on the other side with a newfound understanding. I promise I'll do better, he said, stuffing the last of the spring rolls into his mouth. But maybe we could make this a weekly thing? A team dinner and a chore plan? I couldn't help but smile, my heart swelling with affection. That sounds perfect, but I reserve the right to complain about your dishwashing technique. I can live with that, he replied, grinning. Fast forward two weeks, and we were in a groove. Nick washed dishes, I planned dinners, and every week we set aside time to check in on each other. The cycle of neglect began to dissolve, and our relationship started feeling more like a partnership than a balancing act. Yet, like any sitcom, the universe threw a wrench in our plans. One Friday, after an exhausting week, I returned home to find the sink once again overflowing with dishes. I paused in the doorway, my heart sinking. Had we really reverted back to this? Nick came sauntering in, oblivious to the chaos. Hey, babe. I got us pizza. I felt the frustration bubbling inside me again, but I remembered our agreement. Pizza sounds great, but the dishes. Yeah, yeah. I'll get to them, he promised, but the way he said it made my heart drop. It sounded far too familiar, the promise of a solution that never materialized. I took a deep breath, recalling our previous conversation. Nick, I really need you to handle this. It's not just about the dishes it's about respect. His face fell, and I could see the gears turning in his mind. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to let it pile up again. It's just, I get home, and I want to relax. I forget. I get it, I replied, my heart softening. But we agreed to tackle this together. If we keep pushing things aside, it'll just build up again, and then we'll end up fighting about something silly. And just like that, we found ourselves in a familiar dance of emotions. But instead of letting it spiral, we tackled the issue head-on, side by side at the sink. As we washed and scrubbed, we shared stories and laughter, turning an ordinary chore into an extraordinary moment. You know, I said, splashing a bit of water at him, this isn't so bad when you're actually helping. Ah, I see what you did there, he smirked, wiping his face dry. Next time, I'll make sure to take it more seriously. Maybe you should start calling me out in public. Like a restaurant? I quipped, scrubbing the last plate. Exactly. I'll wear a sign that says, help, my girlfriend is keeping me accountable for my dishwashing. We laughed, and I felt the frustration melting away. Maybe this was the rhythm we needed, a humorous acknowledgement of our imperfections, an acceptance of each other's quirks. Weeks turned into months, and our relationship began to flourish as we embraced open communication, even during the mundane moments. We established weekly house meetings, where we'd sit down, laugh, and tackle everything from chores to future plans. The dishes became a symbol of our commitment to each other, a reminder of our journey from frustration to understanding. One night, after a particularly long week, we sat on the couch with a stack of takeout containers beside us. You know, I said, I think we've both grown so much since the great dish debacle. Nick nodded, a grin spreading across his face. Yeah, who knew that eight days would lead to this? I chuckled. And who knew a pile of dishes could become the foundation of our teamwork? It's ridiculous, isn't it? He laughed, shaking his head. But I wouldn't trade it for anything. You challenge me, and I love that. And I love you, I said, feeling a rush of warmth. As we cuddled on the couch, I realized that love wasn't just about grand gestures or picture-perfect moments. 
It was about the little things the shared laughter, the struggles we faced together, and the lessons we learned along the way. It was about navigating the messiness of life, whether it involved dishes or deeper issues. Here's to our ongoing battle with the dishes, I said, raising an imaginary glass. And to a lifetime of teamwork, he replied, clinking his imaginary glass against mine. And so, we forged ahead, learning to face life's challenges with laughter, love, and a commitment to each other. As we tackled the mundane, we found strength in our partnership, discovering that even the simplest moments could turn into profound reminders of our love.